hello there so downloading the actual uh, ISAP plugin is pretty much straightforward the only thing that you uh, need to watch out for is um, a specific version that you need to download incidentally I, um, I, I, I ran into a bit of a problem when um, um, I was setting up uh, um, the, the, the field itself on a production server because um, um, what I did was I, I ended up using um, 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 a, a, a plugin that is essentially made meant for um, a 64-bit uh, hardware architecture on a 32-bit uh, architecture. And so in my case, um, um, clearly, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm running uh, um, I'm running uh, a 64-bit uh, edition of Windows uh, Server 2003. And so you you notice that as as you scroll down, um, um, there's this uh, particular zip comp compressed file that I, I basically need to to download. Um, if you are otherwise running a two bit uh, hardware architecture, then what you um, what you'd have to do is to download uh, this particular archive. So um, I already have it. Uh, um, I already have it uh, downloaded and all I'll do right now is just copy this dynamically linked uh, library file um, uh, onto uh, onto uh, this particular plugin, this particular Tomcat plugins uh, folder but what I want to do is I want to create, uh, this is not really important but for consistency sake I want to create a uh, I want to create a. I want to create a um, a folder that's uh, uh, <coughs> a folder that's a folder hierarchy that's pretty much going to make sense in the long run. Okay, and I'll just you know paste uh, uh, the plugin file right there. Um, and then the the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create uh, I'm going to start by creating the ISAP redirect properties file. Now a, a point to note here is that an alternative route that you could possibly choose to to take is to um, as as opposed to actually defining um, properties in this ISAP redirect file, you could just as well easily opt to define those settings into your Windows uh, registry. Um, but of course, I, I know uh, uh, well enough uh, as not to mess around with uh, the registry when you know it's not really necessary. Um, and, and so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm just basically going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, paste these uh, values into uh, into that properties file but another point to note is that the properties file has to pretty much be at the um, the same base as as the ISAP plugin itself and another thing to note is that uh, if consistency sake the the name should pretty much match uh, the plugin itself but of course the only difference is that uh, the only difference is that uh, it will have a dot properties uh, extension. Okay, so I'll just uh, copy paste those values right there. Um, so you notice that uh, the only things that I have defined uh, in this file, and at a bare minimum, these these particular uh, parameters should be sufficient, fairly sufficient. So I'm defining an uh, extension URI. Um, that basically points to a logical path uh, to this uh, ISAP uh, dynamically linked file and then the next thing I'm doing here is defining where I would want to uh, log any messages that are specific to my uh, plugin and in my case what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much writing everything to this ISAP redirect log file that uh, is uh, sitting in Tomcat in, in this particular Tomcat uh, directory, and then of course um, specifying the level of detail that I would want uh, 
logged uh, inside of my log file and then next uh, what I'm doing here is um, um, I'm specifying um, the absolute location of this uh, worker file which we define later on um, and then finally I uh, I also define I, we also have defined in here the URI, URI worker uh, map uh, properties file and I explain what uh, or why uh, these uh, two files are important uh, at some point or shortly. Okay, um, and so I'll just uh, save that file. Okay, so the next thing that we would, would want to do basically is to define our worker properties file, and this is this is this is uh, essentially a file that will contain uh, important information um, that pretty much tells uh, IIS exactly which um, which AJP uh, version one dot three port uh, your web container is actually listening on. In my case, I'm basically using the default uh, 8009. Um, and then, uh, of course, I know that by default, uh, I have uh, my web container has AJP uh, version 1.3 implemented. Um, 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 the, the host name uh, via which my web container runs is localhost, seeing that I have uh, uh, Tomcat installed on this uh, um, particular platform. And so what I'll do is I'll just copy paste um, these parameter values. Uh, um, but the only difference is uh, I'm going to put these uh, values into the uh, Tomcat uh, config directory. Okay. Um, so that's our our worker dot uh, our workers dot properties uh, file like that. Let me just save it. Yes. The next thing I'm going to do is just basically uh, create uh, a URI uh, a URI. Uh, uh, worker map uh, properties file. Um, what this uh, essentially does, what this file essentially does is it makes it possible for you to to map a uh, specific context path that you have running within your web container um, um, but by, by defining now th there's, there's something there's something there's something interesting about this 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 particular conf configuration file in that uh, you, you can pretty much define uh, regular expressions right within this particular file to specify which which resources you you want to make accessible via IIS and which ones you want to restrict access to but in my case what I'm doing is um, I'm basically uh, defining example files that I have uh, installed or bundled together with my bare Tomcat installation and then uh, other than that I have uh, defined the various DSpace applications um, uh, that I've already installed right there. Um, so you notice as an example that uh, um, I'm, I'm defining the uh, the uh, uh, I'm defining the uh, the context path uh, that I have inside of my my server.xml file. Um, um, and in this case, what I'm basically refer referring to rather is uh, this context path right here. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly create that. Uh, sorry about that. I'm just going to create that uh, properties file. URI. We come up the properties file, and I'm just gonna copy paste uh, um, these details there. Okay, just got to say yes. 
Okay, so that's pretty much it, um, at least in so far as the configuration files are concerned. Um, I'll see you in the next screencast where I'll show you exactly how to go about uh, um, configuring IIS.